Ai, kia ora mai tātou. Uh, I te tuatahi uh, kei te tautoko au nga mihi kua mihia uh, ki tēnei whenua, nga moana, uh, nga tūpuna, uh, nga tāngata o tēnei rohe nga mana whenua, uh, tautoko au anō, uh, nga mihi uh, ki tēnei mara i tēnei whakaruru hau e manaki mai i a, i a tātou i tēnei wā. Koutou nga hau e whā, uh, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, kia ora mai hui hui tātou. Uh, he mokopuna tēnei no te rohe o mātātua, no nā iwi o tūhoe nā te awa, nā te pūkeko, nā i tai hoki, uh, mihi kau atu. Kia ora rā. A uh, couple of things before I start my kōrero. Firstly, I'm genuinely grateful for the, if not intimidated, uh, for the invitation from uh, Supuru and Te, uh, te Puni Kōkere uh, to present at this hui and to be in amongst uh, just some of the key pioneers in this space, uh, some of whom have already spoken. Um, it's, it, it's inspiring. Uh, in terms of... Oh, uh, in terms of my kōrero today, uh, title suggests I'm going to be looking at the work of the Independent Māori Statutory Board in Tāmaki Makaurau, uh, to uh, measure well-being. Uh, my hope is that, given an outline of the process that the board has implemented uh, since at least 2011, uh, you may gain some insights uh, in terms of how similar work might be undertaken. Just some background on the board. The board was established uh, in 2010 when, under the Local Government Act when the Auckland City Council uh, was created. Uh, the board has essentially two main purposes. Number one is to monitor Auckland Council against its treaty related uh, legal obligations and number two to promote social, cultural, economic and environmental well-being for Māori and Tamaki Makoto. Uh, one thing I will note is that the members of the board are not representative of either mana whenua or mātawaka notwithstanding they are appointed uh, by a process involving both of those groups. If there was one uh, point that I hope you would take for my kōrero today, it would be this. And in terms of the untold story of Tamaki Makoto, I'm not specifically talking about the untold Māori story, I think it's important to emphasise that it is the overall story of Tamaki Makoto. I think to some extent uh, it's very doable to tell the Māori story, but uh, my personal goal is to ensure that that story gets beyond uh, Māori spaces and Māori sectors uh, to create some real conversations. So in terms of this point, my presentation will outline at least three things. Number one, I want to briefly uh, touch upon uh, some of the challenges the board faced in terms of measuring Māori wellbeing in Tāmaki Makoto. Number two, I'll look at at least four ways in which the board addressed uh, those challenges, particularly to tell the untold story of Māori in Tāmaki Makoto. And number three, some of the benefits uh, that the board, council and uh, Māori and other stakeholders have experienced as a result of that approach. I would argue. Kapai. So number one, looking at some of the challenges, particularly in 2010. Uh, so when established, the board had to look at at least three things. Number one, when it was appointed, it really didn't have, if it had a legal obligation to promote social, cultural, economic and environmental well-being for Māori and Tāmaki Makoto, at that time it didn't really have uh, a vision of what that might be, including what did Māori consider to be uh, positive outcomes uh, relevant to them within that quite unique region. Number two, uh, while it may be one thing to identify uh, the outcomes that are relevant and useful for Māori, it's another thing to also have indicators and particularly data sets uh, to actually measure progress uh, towards those outcomes, regardless of who might be uh, 
implementing or undertaking um, interventions to progress towards those outcomes. And number three, uh, while in the event that we did have indicators and gather data, uh, one thing I'm particularly passionate about is that, you know, what use is data um, if it's not able to tell the story? You know, and what is the story that is most relevant and most uplifting and empowering for Māori and Tāniki Makoto. So those were at least three ways in which, three challenges that the board had to face uh, to pretty much un undertake its work. Uh, to address that, at least the board has undertaken at least four pieces of work. The first one, which was the primary focus of my quarter today, was the development of the Māori plan which it undertook in 2011. This is the framework that uh, Kahukore referred to earlier. So to develop this framework, the board engaged with uh, iwi within Tāmaki Makoto, Māori organisations, uh, urban Māori authorities, it was a series of 16 hui, I think, in 2011, and in addition to that, it had a separate rangatahi stream, work stream to gather their insights in terms of what is important to them. Uh, you know, which is smart considering the uh, rangatahi demographic in Tamaki Makoto, and they are essentially uh, the future. Uh, one thing about uh, the plan is the board has always maintained that this is not the board's plan nor the board's vision; rather, it is owned by uh, Māori and Tāmaki Makoto, and the board has always viewed itself as being the kaitiaki of that vision. Um, just a quick overview, quick overview of this matrix. Uh, so as Kahukure referred to, it is grounded in five key Māori values against which uh, five uh, key directions. So with Rangatiratanga, for example, um, the board has an interest in enhancing leadership and participation for Māori and Tāmaki Makoto. Within each of those values, along, alongside uh, the four well-beings, that was primarily influenced by the LGA, uh, which uh, had a requirement for both council and the board to promote those well-being areas. And within each of the cells within the framework is a very clear outcome statement. And with that outcome statement, uh, between three, two to three focus areas for not only the board, but council and other stakeholders within Tamaki Makoto that they could focus on, which uh, the, create, the constructors of this uh, plan suggested would actually produce those positive outcomes. Two other points about this plan. Uh, number one, it comes with a set of advancement action plans that relates to each of the values and that identifies both local government, central government and NGO uh, partners or parties that could drive outcomes in the various areas. And number two, what sits behind this plan is a suite of 111 uh, indicators. Uh, that are available to potentially uh, report on uh, this plan here. Second innovation was in 2015. Uh, the board did put together a data strategy which was to guide its data activities really to support not only reporting on the plan but its data work across the board. Probably the key thing to note here would be the general approach has been to collaborate with key partners which have been identified, included in which, for example, has been Statistics New Zealand and Council's Research Evaluation and Monitoring Unit. REMU is just the wealth of both data and expertise that could, I suspect, uh, be called on by Māori in general to support their both research and data efforts. And also uh, Te Puni Kōkiri. The strategy also identifies prioritised data sets, such as uh, the Growing Up in New Zealand study. Uh, coming to the first report on 
the Māori plan. We did develop a reporting framework which was particularly useful. Again, a similar approach taken to the plan whereby we engaged again with mana whenua and mā tāwaka to identify from the Māori plan uh, headline indicators uh, for the first report which would have been, well which is, sorry, across the board. So that was a really useful process. Uh, from that process we identified what were the criteria that Māori considered to be important by which we could select indicators from that suite of 111. Some of those criteria included, you know, the indicators needed to be valid, uh, they needed to be research-based, uh, they needed to uh, promote action, uh, they needed to be um, empowering and enabling, again, drawing on some of the cordial that we've already had in terms of the very deficit approach that is often taken in terms of reporting on Māori wellbeing. Um, it was a good process to go through and assess the feasibility of indicators, uh, but was, what was uh, even more so revealing was actually, again, as has already been mentioned, uh, the availability of data to support those, uh, those indicators. And one thing I will note is it was quite important to talk about design of the report, copies of which I think might be out there. Because uh, again, one of our driving principles was to have, you know, Māori, at least within Tāniki Makoto, engage with the data not only contained in this report, but, you know, any data within, you know, any, any reporting. Um, so we wanted to keep it pretty simple, you know, we didn't want it to keep it too wordy. And bottom line, we wanted to uh, design and present the data in a way that ideally uh, mana whenua mā tāwaka could see themselves in it. And then finally, uh, we produced uh, last year, late last year, uh, the Māori report itself. Uh, we decided to take a collaborative approach in dealing with this report to ensure that it had uh, good insight and experience from across the board, really. So in that respect, uh, we worked with our data strategy expert panel. Uh, in addition to that, we worked with uh, iwi data specialists um, on the one hand, and then also the other hand, we worked with uh, RIMU, again, Auckland Council's research evaluation and uh, monitoring unit. Um, so that provided, you know, a nice, broad, and I would suggest relatively robust uh, perspective in terms of not only what to report, but also how to uh, report it. From our reporting framework, we opted to report on 22 of the 49 focus areas and indicators supporting that. And in addition to the quantitative data that the report presents, we also uh, presented stories on um, qualitative uh, data on just some key initiatives within Tāmaki Makoto that we thought um, others could learn from. One note that I will make in terms of the uh, design of the report was we have, um, we did decide to actually present the data in accordance with the Māori values as opposed to the wellbeing domains. Um, and that's had an interesting effect which I'll speak to um, in the slide, you know, in the slide here. So, the, the benefits of this approach have, yeah, there are at least three. Number one, what we now have, at least for the board's purposes, is some useful data that can inform uh, policy planning strategy, not only for the board, um, but arguably for Auckland Council and also others who have an interest in, who have an interest in progressing Māori, uh, positive Māori outcomes uh, in Tāmaki Makoto. So in terms of the whānau space, for example, um, we have drawn on some of the, uh, the Kupinga data in terms of perceptions of whānau wellbeing, we do have a story in the report which looks at whānau initiatives out at South Auckland. Um, and also, you know, median household income and, and what have you.
So while the data contained in the report is useful, I'm also particularly interested in the thinking that's actually gone behind the way in which that data has been uh, presented. So as I mentioned earlier, hopefully there will be reports out there, but the data has been presented in accordance with uh, the five values. And one thing that's, um, so we might still have indicators that relate specifically to each of those wellbeing domains, but it, it has an interesting effect when presented in accordance with uh, Māori values, because we suspected they would align closer to a Māori worldview. A really interesting point that I noticed when I got the first uh, copy of the report back from the designers, and I went to the uh, kaitakitanga section and opened it, and this was the picture that they had actually uh, put in there, you know, and my immediate response was, whoa, 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 taiwa, taiwa. This is kaitiakitanga, this needs to be a picture of a maunga or an awa, you know, or a tree. This is the picture that they put in there. But as a result of this, this actually made me really think, you know, about and reframing, you know, kaitiakitanga as has been the case for the other values as well. And what does that really mean if we are going to be talking about an integrated, holistic, you know, Māori worldview. Uh, the report, we did make the decision to privilege Māori, uh, uh, Māori descent as opposed to Māori ethnicity. The report does not solely uh, use Māori descent data. Um, we thought that uh, privileging Māori descent data would be useful for, for particularly iwi um, who have their uri in the area, not only those mana whenua of Tāmaki Makoto, uh, but also other iwi outside of Tāmaki Makoto, and that's an interesting picture, particularly uh, if viewing uh, the work from a mātāwaka perspective. And it's just sort of things like, you know, we have included, in addition to, you know, we have included say, the population estimates in addition to a Māori population of Tāmaki based on descent. And again, as other people have already mentioned, particularly Kahu Kore, um, this process was useful not so much for the data we were able to find, but more so for uh, the data that we could not find or for the, ident the indicators that Mana Whenua Mātāwaka had identified but for which uh, no data is currently available. And it is no surprise that, uh, at least for those indicators contained in the plan, uh, most of those are in the cultural and then I would say the environmental domains. Um, so being able to engage with uh, the likes of Statistics New Zealand and Council's reporting and environmental, sorry, and evaluation and monitoring unit has been really useful to uh, bring that to their attention and also work with them to identify ways in which they can address those shortfalls. And probably one uh, final note in terms of what has come out of uh, this work and which is the next piece of work uh, that I understand Auckland Council is undertaking is, and again, this piece was identified by our uh, data expert panel whereby they questioned, it's one thing to identify, to try to measure Māori wellbeing in Tāmaki Makoto. Uh, will the board, or anyone else, be measuring the contribution that Māori make to Tāmaki Makoto? Which I at least thought was you know, a fascinating approach. Um, it's one thing to say, count the number of marae within Tāmaki Makoto. It's another thing to try to uh, quantify the value that simply having a marae there adds uh, to uh, the distinctive identity of Tāmaki Makoto. To a large extent, this work has been undertaken in the Māori economy sense, so we do have a rough figure of four, you know, Māori contribute four billion uh, to the Tāmaki economy, uh, but how might we measure contribution in other spaces as well, particularly those cultural domains, and particularly in terms of uh, trying to quantify the, the intangible. 
So that's, yeah. So I think that that will provide, that story, that story will provide uh, an interesting frame for the advocacy discussion and also perhaps for even the way in which uh, Māori and Tamaki Makoto, how we view ourselves and the value that we add, you know. Ai, ka pai. Nā reira, koina taku kōrero i tēnei rā. Ka pai, komotu. Thank <laughs> you.